So today I would uh, like to present the work of um, Janis Schmiedl in a contribution uh, with uh, me as a supervisor for his master thesis and Professor Norbert Schmitz from the Pforzheim University. And we um, analyze the domain transfer performance of neural networks without um, a retraining. So maybe to start with, when do we have changes or variances um, in the domains? For example, if we mount additional LiDAR sensors onto a vehicle, or also if we change the mounting points of the sensors, or also the poses, so like the rotations on the vehicle, for example. Or also if we have new types of LiDAR sensors that we add to an existing sensor setup, and also if we change the application environment. And we also heard um, in the previous talks on the degradation of the segmentation performance here. And so we wanted to analyze what we can do um, as a solution to make the segmentation better or uh, to, to have a better domain transfer for our semantic segmentation approaches. And so what can be solutions? Of course, the most, um, well, the most uh, expensive solution here is that we record and also label then, of course, new training data. Another um, option is to synthetically adapt um, the available training data. <clears throat> so um, that would be the domain of um, domain adaption that we were already talking about too um, this afternoon. And well, the well, let's say let's let's call it the cheapest solution would be to um, just have a proper domain transfer so that. Um, the semantic segmentation networks generalize sufficiently well so that we can use them in another um, sensor setup than, it, than they were um, well trained for originally. So one um, example would be here, um, we have uh, different robotic platforms at the Fraunhofer IOSB in Karlsruhe. One has um, one of the old uh, Velodyne liners with 64 beams and um, we are also working with autonomous construction machines. So here you can see the digital twin um, of our IOSB Alice excavator. It's a 24 ton excavator and with four LiDAR sensors. They are of a different type. They have another field of view. And um, what would be preferable is to just take the semantic segmentation network, put it uh, on the other robotic platform and have a good performance. So that was our um, motivation in the work. So as I said, what we need for a favorable domain transfer is um, on the one side, an intrinsic uh, sufficiently well generalization of our segmentation networks. And of course, uh, as we're working in robotics, we also have to um, work in real time. So all that we do has to be real-time capable. And so looking for the current state-of-the-art architectures, um, those at the moment who can achieve the real-time capability are the ones using spherical projections as 2D range images, as you can see on the right side here. So we just take our 3D data and map it onto a 2D range image. And what helps for the domain transfer is if we have a high invariance between our two domains. So if the source and if the data from the source and from the target domain, if they are as well, let's say as similar as possible. One thing that already um, helps here is the theoretical projection. We, can, we will see examples of that within the next minutes. And also what uh, naturally helps as if we have a preferably equivalent viewpoint or also perspective between source and target domain before we start our spherical projection. And there are different adaptions that you can um, do to the, to the capture data in the target domain. So uh, one is the, well, I, we denoted it the shift to source. So it's the translational adaption of the viewpoint. So you just move the, the coordinate system within the point cloud so that it's um, preferably close or um, similar to the one of your, of your source domain. 
the other one is uh, to adapt the field of view. Or, um, and well, as a third option, you can also, you have to ensure that you align the coordinate systems of the torus and the target domain rotationally. So if you have, for example, a rotated lighter for 90 degrees and um, you're just looking like 90 degrees reverse, all your objects, especially in theoretical projections, they will look different. And so as it's um, often in robotics, the combination of multiple options provides the best solution. So, as I said, one option is to just uh, shift the coordinate system. And also, as we know, different types of sensors have different field of views that we need to adapt. So we looked at different um, state of the art semantic segmentation architectures. Uh, one, well, it's uh, already some years old. But um, it has a less number of parameters. So we chose the SQUISEC and the SQUISEC version two architectures for comparison here. Also, the um, RangeNet 21 with a darknet backbone, which is uh, 25 million parameters approximately. And um, we also looked at uh, RangeNet 53, which is um, with two different widths of our uh, spherical projections. And the domain transfers that we analyzed is um, at first, of course, which uh, the one we are here to talk on about, it's uh, the application environment. So how do we get from structured to unstructured environments? So what are things that are different? For example, the surface variation, also the types of objects and also the separation in between the objects that's um, well, the thing about how do we define our unstructured environments? And what can happen here? So it's um, a favorable class selection. So the, the first domain transfer is a bit apart um, from the other three that we analyzed. Second one is about sensor orientation. So if we have different robotic platforms with the same LIDAR sensor, we already have a change in viewpoint and also um, in the orientation of the ray paths. What can we do against it? Um, we can use the circle projection. We can align the coordinate system rotationally and also uh, translate in um, the translation. We can have different sensor types. So for example, a Velodyne LiDAR, um, we can train on a Velodyne LiDAR and uh, want to use it on an Auster LiDAR. So differences here can be the field of view, the noise characteristics, point density, and also the reflection intensity that is considered in some semantic segmentation architectures too. So here, um, what would be adaptions to increase the invariance? Also, of course, the spherical projection here. And um, additionally, the field of view. And so the last and uh, most complicated domain transfer is to go from a single LiDAR sensor to a sensor set up from multiple LiDAR sensors, as we have it on our excavator platform. So what can be different? It's the field of view, the noise, the point density, the reflection intensity, the viewpoint, and also the orientation of the ray paths. And we did um, the analysis of those four cases. I'll just show that quickly um, for the sake of time. We had uh, the source domain of the semantic kitty data set that you all know very well, and we evaluated it, um, the domain transfer on the semantic USL data set. And on our um, on data set that we captured from some data from our IOSB Alice, from the excavator, our technology demonstrator, and also from the small off-road platform with the Velodyne HTL64. So here's a quick summary. We have the Semantic Kitty data set as a source domain where the architectures were trained. Um, they are available within the Leader Bonnetile Toolkit on GitHub. That is the one that my student used uh, to do the analysis here. And um, we tested on those uh, two platforms. And so what are the results we have? Um, if we test the SQUISEC architecture of uh, K-nearest neighbor post-processing, we have, um, well, a IOU for, of uh, overall classes of 31%. And the best result uh, with the most complex architecture with 52%. But what if we go to the semantic USL um, 
already using the adaptions for the theoretical projection, the source alignment, and also of the field of view, we only get uh, eleven point two mean IOU over all classes. And if we go to the um, data set from our excavator, it's only is three point six um, or uh, eight point two for the Q one. So it's quite low here. And um, we were asking ourselves, okay, what can we do? So um, to make it better, and also what are the reasons that the IOU is so low here? Maybe uh, to note for uh, the next minutes, the vegetation, the performance of the architecture on the vegetation was quite good. So it's 47% uh, of IOU and Terra 22. So what's the reason why it's um, so low? And um, as I said, the spherical projection helps because you can elim eliminate point accumulations of the ray paths, and it also uh, increases the domain invariance for rotated 3D LiDAR sensors. And um, what was also very interesting that um, if we look at the boom sensor, it's like mounted here below the excavator boom with the rays in that direction, uh, it has the most evident difference here in the IOU. And so, um, what comes out is that a high range image resolution is especially beneficial for different point densities inside one cloud. And if we look at other ad, um, adaptions that we did, so that's a feed of view arrangement from Semantic Kitty, that's one uh, from Semantic USL. And already shifting the coordinate system, like only one meter, notably increases our IOU here. So we go ahead and increase to 40.6% uh, only by shifting the coordinate system by one meter. So that already shows that those um, options help a lot. It's a bit similar for the data of the excavator. So um, playing a bit with the field of view values, we get better, but it's only 3.6%. So it's not sufficiently good. If we um, also, of course, you could think about um, what about doing the segmentation of all the individual sensors um, and not of the full point cloud here. We also analyzed that we um, and found that it's better to use, for example, the, the left and right point cloud um, after the merge use and extrinsic calibration. It gets a higher IOU than for um, the separate analyzers of the left and right point clouds. And so um, maybe to show you the, uh, the use case here, um, that's the live view of the LiDAR points. So without segmentation here, and um, we use that for um, the robotic decontamination within our competence center, and of course also for uh, motion planning. So we have some also LiDARs here. Let's just go quickly through the video for the sake of time. And, um, of course, um, that's uh, the autonomous excavation. And here you can see the live LiDAR view. So of course, we also did some overfitting analysis. So it um, could be helpful um, for uh, subsequent training to do rotation of the point clouds because we found some slight uh, indications of overfitting. And what we also found about uh, the very low IOU over all classes is that especially in unstructured environments, the um, classes for road, sidewalk, other ground, and terrain are very frequently interchanged. So um, for unstructured environments, it would be very helpful to have uh, a class, class structure that, for example, only uses navigable terrain, where you just can go with your robotic platform no separation in all um, different, in, in many different classes, if you do not use color information for your segmentation. So to conclude, um, what can help for a favorable domain transfer um, if we have different sensor types and sensor setups, you can achieve a higher domain invariance by putting together some pre-processing measures um, or pre-processing methods that we uh, saw. One thing that's very important is a similar viewpoint for the spherical projection. And it helps to apply the pre-processing aids that I was talking about. 
And it also helps uh, to use CNN architectures that are more complex so that they have a higher number of parameters because they are more favorable in the domain transfer. Of course, naturally, um, the domain transfer is better for classes that are pre frequently present in the data set. And also, uh, K and N post processing is beneficial. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we were talking about fused 3D point clouds, high resolution of the range image also helps. And um, naturally, the class track for the class structure in unstructured environments, it can help that um, thoughtful class determinations um, can notably, well, of course, they can notably increase the segmentation accuracy if we just uh, look for where, we, where, where can we go, where can we not go, and uh, not try to classify the ground only on its uh, geometrical characteristics. So what would be our um, future works here? Of course, the analysis of the proposed preprocessing methods and also additional ones. And um, I think something that many are also working on is like to deduce a suitable class structure for unstructured environments, like in comparison to structured ones, and also um, to combine the domain transfer analysis with post modeling XAI methods. So just to analyze the geometrical characteristics um, of our point clouds and um, to combine that with the segmentation accuracy. Yeah, with that, um, I want to thank you for your attention. And uh, if there are some questions, I would be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you, Nina. Thank you for the very interesting talk. Uh, we might have time for a few quick questions. If there are any, please write them in the chat or raise your hand in the, in the participants view and I could unmute you. Maybe in the meantime, I could ask one question, Nina. Um, what's your opinion or what's your intuition about maybe having more intense or like more flexible data augmentation methods during the training of even just the initial 3D segmentation um, for the source domain, just to even alleviate these problems, as you mentioned, of just moving the, the coordinate frame up or down a few meters, changing the performance so drastically. Do you think that's a useful approach or what's your intuition behind that? Well, as we also found that um, frequently captured classes are better in a domain transfer, more augmentation would uh, certainly help. So if you have more different viewpoints already during the capture of the 3D data and you're using the different spherical projections or where you can just learn how it's um, how objects look differently from different viewpoints, I think that might certainly help to also optimize uh, the segmentation performance here. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, we don't seem to have any questions coming in from the chat or from the participants. So I would thank you for the talk, Nina.